my view is that everything is just one consciousness that fragments itself to have a unique experience and everything is just one entity you know everything is entangled interconnected so that's why all is one and the illusion the matrix tries to put us into separation that we are different that we are separate from nature from others that we are different so we fight we compete we use others hey this is mike sigula from truefury.com and welcome to another video so today we're going to talk about five matrix traps or at least i call them this way or i consider these to be traps that so many people in society fall into and we're gonna start with examples that might be a little bit more down to earth so i think this is probably gonna resonate with m more people and towards the end of the video the last two examples that i'm gonna share will be more metaphysical maybe a little bit more controversial to many people but in my view the last two are the most important so please watch the whole thing if you can and let's start so first example is the trap of fitting in it is no measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society jiddu krishnamutri indian philosopher i love this quote one of my all-time favorites we are living in a society that is very toxic on every single level and the way how, how our minds work is that we want to fit in so we get accepted right and if you try to fit in into the world that is toxic you become just another brick in that toxic wall you become another toxic person so unfortunately the system is programming people to behave in specific ways and then they try to fit in and be accepted by the rest right so what others gonna think of me if i gonna behave in this way if i gonna be myself you know behave as i want to then will i be accepted by the rest and in this way many people might be afraid to express themselves because they are afraid to be judged misunderstood you know if there are toxic behaviors that are accepted people start doing the same what everyone else is doing it might seem immoral or something wrong about it but you know everyone else is doing it and you want to fit in right so for example you know someone like me who is interested in topics that might be uh, strange to many people like I've heard it many times when I talk about metaphysics or spirituality or some paranormal topics which I find interesting you know these types of topics are often ridiculed in society I've seen these types of situations many times you know someone in my family I haven't seen them for years oh what do you do oh this conspiracy stuff right like this kind of you know crazy conspiracy guy right so you see this is the thing like the more i understand how broken the system is the less i care what people think of me and many people block themselves to express their unique abilities you know their unique persona because they are afraid what people are gonna think of them and once you break through that once you stop caring what others think and you start doing what you think is right what is your truth living your own through your own truth you become more and more happy and fulfilled you start resonating with people who you know who f maybe find your path also cool and maybe they were also afraid to speak out or they didn't know there are other people who think the same ways so you see this is the matrix trap to keep people in prison of what other people think of us so we don't express our own unique identity and another way how this works is also when 
we have some norms, what is success, what is not successful, what your parents say you should become a lawyer because that means success, you're gonna make a lot of money, right? But maybe you have a completely different gift. So the society is programming us to do things in life that are considered successful. And often these types of paths are completely incompatible with our own talents and gifts. And many people, unfortunately, don't listen to themselves and take these paths that society and the matrix and the system is programming them with. And then they become unhappy, miserable, unfulfilled, stressed, and all these kind of things. So don't fall into the trap of fitting in among toxic society. Let's try to express your uniqueness, be yourself, and hopefully it's gonna take you somewhere positive. You're gonna you know, attract your own tribe and, uh, and you're gonna feel happy. You don't wanna wake up you know, when you are old and grumpy already and, uh, and, and you think, oh, I should have done this or should have done that or should have lived my life this way, but I was afraid what other people gonna think of me and I haven't done any of these things. You don't wanna be that person. Okay, so number two, adhering to cultural norms or playing by the rules. And what do I mean by that? So, you know, people tend to repeat behaviors or patterns that they're conditioned with without questioning if they make sense or not, <laughs> if they are moral or not. An example is some kind of cultural norm that is repeated from generation to generation and no one ever questions it. An arranged marriage is an example. You know, I've met many people who just were unhappy in these types of marriages, but they're afraid to leave because what my family gonna think about me? Or, I don't know, or, or it's difficult to get a divorce because the whole society considers that to be normal. This is a toxic kind of pattern that repeats over generations and people don't question that. You know, my parents did this way, did it this way, I'm gonna do the same or some kind of a treatment of women in some countries where they are not treated equally. You know, everyone is doing it, this is the norm, so let's repeat that, right? <laughs> we don't think, we don't question things, right? We just do what the previous generation did, right? So these are examples of things I'm talking about here. Another example could be putting people in jail for cannabis, right? Crazy. You have countries where cannabis is accepted, no issues. It's a, often considered way safer than alcohol in many ways. But because of some bureaucracy and because of some, you know, outdated legal system, which is repetitive, because the next person comes and doesn't question, just repeats the same thing over and over through generations, people have their lives destroyed because of something that shouldn't be an issue at all, right? <laughs> So these are examples of what I'm talking about here. Another example could be parents who, you know, repeat what their parents did, what they thought is the right thing. So for example, parent thinks that the child should do this thing. I don't know, you're gonna play piano because maybe you're gonna become a famous pianist or you're gonna play tennis because this could be a good career or you're gonna go to this and this school because you're gonna become a programmer and programmers make a lot of money. So having your own biases as a parent and forcing them on your child because you think this is gonna be good for them when they might wanna have a completely different path, they might not be talented in those specific areas you think gonna be good for them. And then the result is complete opposite. The child had to do something that was not good for them and the child became unhappy, miserable and then started reacting and creating trouble as a teenager and all these kind of things. So you know these types of toxic repetitive patterns that people repeat and don't think about, don't question 
They do because this is the norm, or this is what I was told, this is how I was raised, and all these kind of things. This is what I'm talking about here. So number three, happiness is external, is conditional. Ah, oh, I see it all the time, all the time. It's funny how people always fall into this trap. Yeah, when I'm gonna have that car, I'm gonna be happy, then my life's gonna get better. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna get that car and uh, you're gonna enjoy it for two months, maybe. You're gonna get used to it as quickly as you get used to, to every other thing you bought so far, like your phone, your computer, whatever the gadget you thought it's gonna make you happy. And uh, what's gonna stay? The payments for another five years to pay every month. So you have to work your ass off to make sure you don't miss the payments. So this is what you're gonna get here. You know, you're gonna get used to it as you got used to everything else so far. <laughs> and then, you know, the dream passes and you still think about the next thing that's gonna make you happy or whatever. Or, you know, I'm gonna be in a relationship and then I'm gonna be happy, right? When I'm gonna find love of my life. But now I'm miserable because I'm single. <laughs> yeah, another trap like that. This is, how a lot of people think, right? That if something gonna change or they're gonna get some goal or they're gonna get better job, more money, partner, some gadget, house, whatever, then they will be happy, right? <laughs> and that's never works like that. If it's gonna work, it's gonna work temporarily. And if you can't be happy with what you got, obviously, you know, depends on the situation. If you're having some massive challenges, like you can't pay your bills, whatever, then it's difficult, right, to be happy. But for most people, if you look at how we live in Western countries and you compare it to the rest of the world, you probably have more than maybe 70, 80% of people on the planet, right? If you would actually start looking at statistics, how people live in many, many countries, you know, whole of Africa almost, or India, or, you know, some of these other regions in Asia, where people have way, way less, and they can be happy with nothing, with nothing. And then you have US, you know, where most people can uh, afford most basic things in comparison to, to the countries I mentioned, and, you know, some massive percentage of population takes antidepressants, right? It's completely crazy. So this is the problem, you know, a lot of people, I've seen it constantly, people think they're gonna get something, then they're gonna be happy, and then it's not what they thought, it's not how they thought they're gonna feel, even if it was like that, it was for a short period, and then it disappeared, and then they're still unhappy, or they still think the next thing is gonna get better, then they're gonna become happy, and all these kind of things. If you can't learn to be happy with what you have, then it's unlikely that whatever comes gonna make you happy, first thing. Second thing is that if you can learn how to, you know, see the glass half full and just be grateful for what you have, then from that level, when you become naturally happy by just being yourself, by just living your life, by just being grateful for what you have so far, this state, attracts more of the same towards you. So you become version that starts attracting more of the same, more of the same kind of vibration or level, you know? And from that moment, you can become happier and happier and happier because more of the good things gonna be coming to you that's gonna make you even happier, right? Because you appreciate things, right? But if you lack, if you think, oh, I don't have this, oh my God, why I don't have that, why my life is so, why I don't have a rich boyfriend that pays for everything, oh, you know, this kind of thinking, why my life is not like the life of celebrities in the movies or in reality shows or in the magazines, oh, you know, if my life would be like that, I would be happy. This kind of thinking, you know, then it's unlikely you're ever gonna be happy. Simple stuff. All right, so now number four, I said we're gonna get a little bit esoteric. So the trap, which I call the illusion of separation. People love to label themselves by some labels, like I'm black, white, male, female, plumber, 
programmer, CEO, boxer, whatever, whatever the labels we have, Muslim, Christian, la 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 la. And people tend to think that I'm different, right? Because I belong to a group. <laughs> Another thing is that, you know, people tend to value themselves based on money, for example, level. So, you know, celebrities and CEOs, they're way different than me. They're better. <laughs> and I'm just little me, little me. Another really big issue. First of all, it's never good to think this way because you just create boundaries. You think that there are different groups. You start having some kind of assumptions about different people that might be false. And often, once you get to know people, they're not that bad. Other groups, sometimes you might have maybe different perspectives, but you still might like each other. So first problem here, right? That we create these artificial boundaries through this kind of I belong to a group thinking. Another thing is that a lot of people think here that maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe, you know, I'm not like them. I'm just little me. And uh, often if you're gonna stop thinking this way, you're gonna open yourself to challenges and possibilities and try things out. Sometimes it can uh, turn out that there are not, no such big differences as you thought. For example, you think I'm not gonna be good at this thing, like martial arts, because I don't know, this is difficult. And then you start going to classes in a couple of months and you are good. <laughs> so you were putting these limited beliefs upon yourself. You know, you are limiting yourself through this type of thinking, through labeling and things like that. Or I'm not good enough to get this job or I can't become whatever, whoever I want to become because I'm not like them. <laughs> you know, we are all not like them when we started, right? Everything you had to learn. But also this could be work against us because sometimes people naively think that yeah, I can be anything, anyone. And the goals are maybe too far out from what you are capable of doing, or they are just completely made up, you know, like some ego goals, like I wanna be a CEO of a tech company, for example, and you are not this kind of person who would probably go through all the challenges, stress, and everything required. So also to watch out to like, not fall into the trap of false programs and goals that are not coming from us. But at the same time, to not think that we are so different and we belong to some kind of groups or whatever. <laughs> because, you know, everything is like, if you look at nationalities, same thing. Like you think you were born in some country, but if you look at the lineage and the history, there were all sorts of mixed races over centuries. So you are not really what you think you are once and all these kind of things. And then there is a way bigger problem here because really like my view is that everything is just one consciousness that fragments itself to have a unique experience and everything is just one entity, you know? Everything is entangled, interconnected. So that's why all is one. And the illusion, the matrix tries to put us into separation that we are different, that we are separate from nature, from others, that we are different. So we fight, we compete, we use others and all these kind of things. And this is always toxic. This always brings bad consequences. And finally, my favorite trap illusion of the matrix that I'm hearing a lot <laughs> from people that you live once. So if you live once, that means just be selfish, take as much from everyone else, use everyone else to your advantage, take from society, from Earth's resources, have fun and use everyone and be selfish as much as possible because you live once, right? Then you're gonna be gone. <laughs> yeah, this is the biggest lie and illusion and biggest trap that most people don't understand. <laughs> you live forever because you are part of the mind, collective mind consciousness, and you go through a process of evolution as a soul. <laughs> Same way, like every night you go have a dream and you project 
part of yourself into that dream. This version of you here is, is a projection of the bigger aspect of yourself. It wouldn't be fun if you would remember your past lives because then you would know how to play the game and it would be so much fun. What's the point to play a video game if you know all the outcomes and you know how to play the game? So it's more fun if you, every single time you come here, you, you forget everything and you have choices. You can be service to self, like the programming the matrix wants you to be, right? Be selfish, so you get temporary fun, or you can be service to others or service to the whole, and there are other rewards that come with it. Service to self path will bring you temporary pleasure here. Service to others path will get you out of the matrix because you can only evolve higher if you become service to others more. So this is the biggest trap. <laughs> this, is, this is why people are stuck here in this reality because they polarize themselves. They become service to self too much. And the rules are that you can't evolve higher if you are service to self. If you are more than 51% service to self, then you are stuck at this level. And if you are like super selfish, super service to self, you evolve, but you change polarity. <laughs> and it's not fun there, not fun. not fun to become negatively polarized entity. So I said, it's gonna get a little bit more esoteric. I know it might not make sense to a lot of people. Maybe it makes sense to you. I understand the whole process, but you know, it's complex. And I just wanted to, at least if you don't believe anything I'm saying here, at least have an open mind, maybe there is something to it, you know? We are, we've been hearing different religions talk about karma, they talk about soul, maybe there is something to it, you know? So have an open mind about these things. I don't say believe everything I say, but just have these kinds of ideas. And um, at some point I'm probably gonna make a more complicated video explaining the whole process and give you some evidence and examples. But I'm gonna finish here with my five examples of matrix traps. Hope this makes some sense. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. If the video resonates with you, please give it a like, please, please. <laughs> Share it on social media and follow me on Instagram. It's Mike Saigula on Instagram. And uh, I'm doing coaching one-on-one. -on -one, so have a look at truefury.com forward slash coaching. If you are interested or send me an email, it's coaching at truefury.com. This is to do with personal development and spiritual growth. So thank you for watching entire video. And if you made it till the end, you get a virtual hug from me. <laughs> virtual hug, hug. <laughs> You get a free hug at the end because you made it to the end of the video. This is your bonus. <laughs> Till next time.